Okay, so um, by a quick show of hands, who, who amongst of you in the audience here are familiar with the IEEE? Oh, great. I'm impressed. There's uh, certainly a few more than what I expected. Okay. All right. So, um, again, I'm from the IEEE. Um, when we normally attend these kind of events, you know, the first question folks ask is, you know, what's IEEE doing here? Um, you know, there's several reasons why we are here, and certainly um, you've heard this said amongst several of the, uh, my esteemed colleagues this morning in terms of from a standardization and interoperability perspective. Uh, but there's different aspects that we're working on right now, and certainly some of this information I'd like to share with you. So certainly, um, you know, we'll talk about several things, uh, you know, the IEEE and the IO2 initiative, we'll talk about some of the intro introduction to standards, and certainly the key IEEE IoT initiatives. Uh, certainly under, under development right now. So, uh, you know, this is a slide that many of you have already seen before, and, uh, you know, it goes back to the days where, you know, we first initially had the, uh, had the you know, the, the internet. You know, the internet was, uh, uh, you know, a framework of interconnected computers. And then someone came up with, the, you know, we had our devices all, all completely separate. And then someone came up with a bright idea of, hey, let's get all this stuff connected. So you heard Magic talking about this morning in terms of some of the things that you're finding, you know, the connected toaster, the connected refrigerator, the connected toilet, you know, so they've gone from one extreme to the other, all in the, all in the mindset of helping to, you know, ease, you know, helping to provide convenience, help solve particular issues. So, you know, the internet of things is huge, it's, per it's pervasive, and certainly what we've heard this morning is in terms of the growth is extraordinary in terms of where we're seeing right now. Um, the, the IoT is certainly not a fad, it's something which has been deployed across the board, and again, from my colleagues earlier on this morning, you heard some of the areas, or some, certainly some of the use cases that, that they were playing on. So, you know, as we talked about, um, you know, some, some of the growth there, um, why is IEEE involved in this? Why is IEEE focusing on, IEEE, on IoT? Now, IoT is just one of several emerging technology areas that we're looking at, but certainly this is one of the first ones that we started looking at maybe two, two and a half years ago. And some of the reasons why we've been doing this is, you know, as it states here, to create a critical mass of offerings uh, to impact the future of, I, uh, you know, of IoT. For those of you who are familiar with the standards association aspect of the IEEE, you know, one of our, you know, our mission statement is basically advancing technology for humanity. So the work that we do behind IoT basically supports that effort. You know, we, we work in many different regions across the globe, uh, using IoT to deliver some of the services. You know, we get, uh, using IoT to help in some of these parts of, uh, some parts of India, whereby they don't have things which are connected, but we can use some of the low power um, technologies and certainly using the IO, uh, IoT devices to interconnect and have folks have, having access to many of the services they didn't have before. So, um, you know, that's one aspect. The other aspect is certainly as far as the IEEE is concerned, to provide some of the additional services. Many folks, they are familiar with the IEEE, as we've seen before this morning. Uh, some of you are familiar with the IEEE Standards Association. Many folks think the Standards Association only focus on developing standards. That's partly true, but there are other aspects that we focus on as well in terms of looking at the emerging technology and how we can bring the emerging technologies to parts of the world that typically don't have access to these various uh, technologies in, in some way, shape, or form. So, uh, you know, again this morning, we heard some of these very similar things in terms of what, you know, the view of the IIT. It's basically a multitude of uh, different ideas. And some of these things that you see when folks mention IoT includes things like deep digitization, as we're talking about here. We're talking about the connectivity range from local globe to global. We're talking about some of the huge infrastructures that we've, talk that we've seen before. And certainly in terms of the myriad of applications that we've seen across the board. IoT now has now, you know, moved into some of the spaces where, you know, we, uh, some of the other slides and we do have a booth outside, you'll see some of the different areas, e-health, um, uh, you know, we're talking about uh, uh, smart cities, uh, we're talking about the automobiles in terms of, uh, you know, autonomous systems, all these different things, they have some aspect of IoT, and quite recently we started an effort around IoT in a blockchain space, which is extremely exciting. So, you know, when you're talking about IoT, again, you hear these kind of 
connected terms, and you heard of several of them this morning in terms of the, you know, the Internet of Everything, uh, the, networked, uh, the network of things, all these different things are synonymous that you hear with IoT, and that's consistent and it will continue to be so over the next, over the next several years. And I'm sure over time you'll hear more terminologies coming up, um, you know, and it will continue to grow significantly. So, you know, th this is a slide which, uh, uh, again, has been seen in many different aspects. And, you know, what, what, when we look at the, the top, in the top, uh, top left, we see about the number of devices which are connected. And, uh, you know, again, we've seen previously that, uh, you know, the numbers of devices keep on growing depending on which market study you look at, depending on what company you, you talk to. These numbers continue to grow. But one thing we do know for sure is that it's a huge amount of de uh, connected devices. And obviously associated with those connected devices, will be the, the amount of data that's flowing backwards and forwards between the two. We're talking about many different applications in terms of, uh, you know, where they support. You know, uh, we're talking about wearables, we talk about home automation, we talk about commercial, we're talking about autonomous systems. All these different things we're seeing today. Um, again, in terms of some of the, you know, the, di uh, the different uh, business approaches, we're seeing this in terms of the intelligent services, uh, we're seeing some of the open ecosystems, and again, all these things will continue to grow as, you know, as we go forward. So, you know, what's causing the drive in terms of these uh, billions of devices that we're seeing today? You know, here's just a, t just a small example of some of the things that you see in a home or even in a room. You know, you see your thermostats which are connected, you have your remote control, you have your, he your, you know, your heating systems, you have your, uh, your, your radiators, all these things are connected to the internet in some way whereby you now have control. You know, you want, you know people are asking for control for this front, you know, remotely, so, you know, you can be, you know, you can be at work and by the time you come home, you come home to a nice warm room and all these kind of things. So it's more of the convenience factor. But again, these are some of the things which are driving the growth in terms of the internet, in, in terms of the IoT market. So, you know, I'll quickly go through in terms of some of these, uh, you know, what we do and who, who we are. But certainly, you know, again, some of you, some of you are certainly familiar with, uh, with the Standard Association. The Standard Association is an organization that resides under the IEEE. The IEEE has many different uh, societies. Uh, that's a different aspect, but we focus specifically on the standards and the standard development process. We do not develop standards ourselves, but we basically bring industry together and provide a framework for them to develop those, uh, those relevant standards. Uh, you know, we have a number of uh uh, technologies that they span, and here we're showing just a, you know just a sample of some of the areas that we're focused on, from from the aerospace industry, from design and automation, from organic components, reliability, right the way through to some of the, you know some of the new and emerging technologies. So you know when we talk about standards, why do folks why are folks interested in standards? And certainly you know some folks are very positive towards standards, some folks are not so positive towards standards. But we see standards having a, a real role and a real place in any particular technological environment. And certainly as we heard this morning in terms of some of the key things which are driving that, uh, you know, the standards approach is, is reliability, it's interoperability. All of these things play a key role in, uh, you know, in the space. And when we see IoT, IoT, this is, you know, this becomes extremely important and extremely critical. You know, when uh, IoT first came out, there, were num there was many issues in terms of devices, you know, unable to interconnect, you had standalone islands, they were causing all kinds of problems. Uh, so, you know, we, is, we saw this and industry came to us and said, you know what, we need to develop a solution. Now again, we are not, uh, you know, the only standards development organization around that's doing something similar to this, but certainly um, uh, the, the growth of this particular approach is certainly, uh, you know, continues cont uh, continue significantly. So when you know when we look at the standards and so forth to ensure that you can cultivate, do what you need to do. Then once you've you know find out where you want to go in maybe a year or so, then you can progress or transition to a different area. But it's more of a cultivation arm. Then we have conformity assessment. Conformity assessment was actually started about five years ago. Um, I was one of the first. There was two of us who actually started the, the, this particular group. Uh, but it's all about certification, obviously. Uh, certification as far as uh, um, 
many different aspects, many different technologies was, again, a new concept for folks, and some folks understood it, some folks didn't. But again, we don't do the actual certification ourselves. Oh, sorry, we do the certification. Again, we provide the framework, the procedural framework. However, we work with external entities to actually do whatever testing. Now, the certification that we typically do is tied towards an IEEE standard. So from there, there's, uh, there's about five or six different areas. Uh, we haven't started something on, uh, on IoT, but certainly IoT plays a, plays a, uh, plays a role in that. Um, some of the things that we're doing right now, and these are some of the standards which are specifically um, applicable to um, IoT. So the first one that uh, we started, and this was started again about 18 months ago, it's, uh, it's P2413, which is an architectural framework for, uh, for IoT. This one has, uh, re uh, you know, I think Magic was talking about that earlier on, but it's received significant interest in the market. Um, we have a number of companies that's participated, and some of the companies are actually here that's participated in this group. You know, and what, is this, what, what does this group primarily do? So from that particular standpoint, you know, it's all about various IoT domains, basically interconnectivity. It works at the protocol level and provides that framework in terms of how devices interoperate. interoperate. Um, so here's the architectural framework where you talk about, you know, the concrete domains. We talk about the different aspects that this is showing, the smart manufacturing, the smart grid. All these make up this architectural framework which we're seeing here. Uh, now, again, there's lots of details behind this. Um, you know, I can provide you with additional information afterwards. But certainly, um, you know, this is the first one. And from this, this has spawned several other, other activities around uh, IoT. From here, this is the membership that we're currently showing as far as the uh, P2413 uh, group. Uh, many, as I said, many of the companies you would recognize here. Uh, Cisco, who was here earlier on, uh, plays, a, plays a significant role. And again, what we're doing here is to make sure we bring industry together that can actually work on a particular issue, particular solution, and basically you know, come up with something that they can uh, bring to the market. Where we are right now as far as P2413 is that uh, uh, the end of this year, early part of Q1, is where we'll have a finished uh, standard that will be made available to folks who, who need to access it. So here's some other ones I'll just run through very quickly, and uh, you know I'm not going to spend too much time on these one. But here we have P1451, which is the standard for harmonisation of IoT devices and systems. Uh, you know, and again, this particular one it addresses, as we was heard earlier on this morning, things like security and scalability. Uh, security is certainly one of the things which you'll find as an underlying theme in most of these standards that we're going from the P2413 to uh, to this particular one. And again, for the same reasons that was discussed earlier on this morning, security becoming a key factor. One of the things that we saw when uh, IoT devices first came out was the security aspect was basically seen as an afterthought. Right now, it's obviously, it's, uh, it's a key component and seen at the very early stages of, uh, of IoT devices and certainly the, their developments. Uh, here we're talking about this architectural framework for real-time on-site uh, operations, uh, facilitation. Again, these are all different aspects in terms of what we're doing in terms of the IoT space. Um, uh, you know, some of these, th you know, some of these things obviously focus on specific areas, but uh, you know, these, as I said, are all being driven from the need of industry saying, you know, coming to the IEEE saying, you know, we need to, we need to get together to form these. Uh, this one here is one of the newest ones, P2418, and this one addresses IoT. IoT, and obviously, as we've seen, IoT is, uh, uh, is pervasive. Everyone's talking about IoT the same, sorry, blockchain. Um, everyone's talking about blockchain the same way that they did when IoT first came out. So um, uh, ag again, right now, depending on who you speak to, blockchain is basically going to solve the world's ills and the, and the world's problems. We certainly look at this as certainly it's a very interesting area. You know, we've invested a lot of time and resources to help identify and investigate how we can do different things on here. And we're, focused on, uh, we're, focused, we're focusing on several key, uh, uh, key applications right now when it comes to blockchain. But, uh, <clears throat> but um, you know, we've done different things in this area. We've also just launched a study around the blockchain and some of the impacts it has on the market. And certainly there's the underlying theme as far as the IoT piece is concerned. And here, here's another one, 2510, which one, this one talks about standards for establishing quality of data, uh, sensors, uh, parameters in the Internet of Things environment. So again, all these different aspects we're looking at, uh, and again, it's not just one size fits all. Um, you know, before, as I said, when we, look, when we first looked at the 2413, then all of these different aspects started to spawn from that. 
So, you know, as we mentioned earlier on, or as I mentioned earlier on, certainly when we look at the Standards Development Organization or SDOs, you know, we are not the only ones out there. Or, you know, you have your local, uh, the local BSI here. Um, you have, uh, we're working with a number of standards organizations throughout the globe. And this is just a sampling of some of the ones that we've worked with. And again, they provide different aspects um, in, in terms of uh, some of the, the you know, from a standards development organization. But, uh, you know, we are part of a, uh, you know, a low, large global collaboration um, uh, initiative. And these ones here, the, you know, these are some of the, uh, you know, some of the, these are some of the ones here as well that do, you would recognize people, some of, you know, Wi-Fi Alliance, some of the, you know, the Sun Alliance. These are all, all folks that you would have seen on your day-to-day -day operations in terms of uh, other ones out there. But this is just to say we are not the only ones that's working on this area. There are others who's focused on many different aspects, but, uh, you know, from our standpoint, it's more of a collaborative approach. Okay, so again, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. We do have a table outside in the front, so if you do have any additional questions, I'd be more than willing to go through things with you in a lot more detail. Again, thank you very much.